get this, my brother and I are turning 30 soon, okay? I know. I play like 15 on a show, yeah. It's great, career longevity is perfect, awesome. Hello, I'm Cole Sprouse, and today we're gonna go on a shopping spree with GQ. I am going to spend all of GQ's money and you're gonna watch and encourage me the entire time. Shall we? This category is comic books. Now, clearly GQ did their research. I used to be, and I, I still am, a massive comic fan. My brother and I used to work at a comic book shop. The first things I, I really took to reading were uh, young romance mangas uh, that were mainly for young girls. That's actually the first time I think I've said this on camera. Okay, X-Men, first issue. This is big, $325,000. Wow. Uh, 1963, the first X-Men and Magneto appearances. This is where it all began. Okay, it's got a rating of nine. The page quality, white pages. So that means no one has put their filth um, all over them is what I assume. Some guy had the foresight of going, wow, this is the first issue. I'm gonna immediately throw it inside a plastic uh, and then sit on it. But this one's $325,000. Superman, first issue, $300,000. Now this is probably a much more rare comic book. This was published in 39, but the condition, the spine of the cover split and completely detached. That's hard, that's hard. And a coupon cutout of 17th page, this does not affect the story. They made that note right there. I wanna know what that coupon was. I like how the person who first got this comic was like, you know, Screw the comic. I need the coupon. Well, there's not a coupon that exists that's gonna drop the price of this Superman comic. Uh, this is $300,000. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep searching. Batman number one, $85,000. It's the first appearances of the Joker and Catwoman. Uh, this was back when Robin was showing full thigh, which is great, and calf. Great thigh, great calf. Um, really, really erotic. Okay, this condition is even worse. All right, this is a 0.5. Back cover is completely missing and the front cover is detached. Incomplete comic. You know, come on, if you're gonna spend the money on, on an original, I, I would want the full thing. Archie Comics number one. This is 250,950 plus dollars. With an 8.5 condition, it's published in 1942. Only three copies ever in modern day have earned a CGC grade higher than VGFN. Don't know what that means, but this is incredibly valuable. I would say, I, I don't know if I'd spend $300,000 on pretty much any piece of paper. To suspend our disbelief here for a moment, we can assume that this guy's gonna start a bidding war, so we can assume that this price is gonna go up. In that case, for the value and the quality, uh, without a bidding war, with a confirmed price, I would go with X-Men. Collectibles. Okay, this is a big category. I think everyone should have a collection. It doesn't matter, it can be rocks you find. Uh, it can be other people's hair. Extremely rare, Cartier cigarette lighter and dispenser, 1930s. Extremely rare. It's in the name, okay? Take it with a grain of salt. $36,500. <coughs> to operate, place the cigarette in the depository under the top lid and pull down side lever. Cigarette is then dropped, lit, and dispensed. That's kind of cool. If you're going for the Gatsby of it all and you want to have a bunch of well-dressed people over and they drop cigarettes and it's lit and they take it right out and then they find you two days later face down in your own swimming pool, this is an awesome thing to have. I can see this in a lot of houses in LA. A lot of people that come to the city are obsessed with that old Hollywood shit while ignoring all the big red flags about it. I, I don't think my friends would look me in the eyes again if I had this on my mantelpiece. I don't, I don't know about this one. Jerry Seinfeld's The Pez Dispenser Manuscript, 1992, $27,500. Full draft for The Pez Dispenser, season three, episode 14. Episode in which Jerry Seinfeld's handwriting on yellow ruled legal folio, corrections throughout. 
That's really cool. I know some of my friends are diehard Seinfeld fans. I was a Cheers guy. It's quite rare that you get the opportunity to see into the mind of someone editing. They're saying there are corrections throughout. I think that's, I mean, that's gold. If you're able to get your hands on this and try and get into, into, into Jerry's head, it's like having Da Vinci's notebook, you know what I mean? That's artistic gold right there. Okay, Christine Wang, Woman Yacht, 2019. That's $22,500. Uh, it's acrylic on canvas, 96 by 72 inches, part of an ongoing series by Wang recreating memes about cryptocurrency. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I never read memes aloud. It's not right. Everyone reads memes with their own strange little voice inside their head, but for the sake of this video, I will. So there's a woman engaged in domestic violence from the looks of it, and she's going, stop <laughs> spending all our money on Bitcoin. And she, he looks scared. She's beating him. It flashes forward to them on a yacht, Three years later, I'm so glad I married you. This is an incredibly toxic relationship. I guess she was using him all along. And maybe she should have just trusted that he was passionate about something ahead of the curve. I am the first to admit I don't know anything about this person's body of work. Okay, well, the Warhol Cabbage Patch dolls. $30,000 to $50,000. Cabbage Patch doll boy and Cabbage Patch doll girl. Two works. Pencil on paper. Stamped with the estate of Andy Warhol stamps, plus the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts. I mean, it's a Warhol. It's incredibly valuable. I did go to the Cabbage Patch Museum, my girlfriend and I. Just as frightening as one would imagine it is. Everyone who works there has to dress up like nurses that are delivering the babies. Out of cabbage. I love that sort of stuff. I think it's really spooky. It's one of those incredibly unique experiences I loved all the celebrity portraits on the walls. Like, I mean, people you couldn't imagine. You couldn't really imagine over there. There was like Pavarotti. And then presidents, pictures of presidents, all of them on the walls. They all been to the Cabbage Patch Museum. I thought I was going out to some, you know, cabinet of curiosity in the middle of woods. No, it's an establishment, dude. It was great, it's a good day. Did not take home a baby though. Take care of a Cabbage Patch baby? Are you kidding me? What do they even eat? I would say, out of the collectibles, for me personally, I would go for uh, the Seinfeld manuscript. Trips. Whoa! Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Adventure. $6,000 a person, two night immersive adventure. Live your Star Wars story through exclusive experiences, missions, and activities. That's really cool. And gourmet dining. Now the gourmet dining they're showing looks like shrimp dipped in blue dye, which of course is space shrimp. Everyone knows it's space shrimp. I think if you're a diehard um, Star Wars person, then great, $6,000 if you can justify it, awesome. A little pricey for two nights. For the Twins Day Festival, largest annual gathering of twins in the world. My brother and I really wanna to go to this for our 30th birthday because it falls on August 5th and our birthday is August 4th. Festival started in 1976 because that's when twins were invented. Activities, double take parade and more. Double take parade, oh I get it, that's cute. I'm interested to see how many shining twins we have here. So I'm excited. National Geographic, Greece, wonders of an ancient empire. Around $7,000 a person. Trace 5,000 years of Greek history while exploring the country's incomparable archeological treasures. Delve into the mythology and masterpieces of ancient Greece with local scholars and archeologists. That's really cool. I'm always fascinated with this sort of stuff. I was an archeological student in school, so I've done a lot of this stuff. Virgin Galactic trip to space, $450,000 a person. Spaceship and mothership climb together to just below 50,000 feet. Next, pilot releases spaceship from mothership. I love that they're using the mothership term. Colors outside the window change from blue to indigo to midnight black, nearly 300,000 feet above the earth. The cabin becomes your playground and your tomb to unbuckle and experience weightlessness. Maybe uh, this is just a capitalist thing. You know, we grew up in the States, everyone's going, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said astronaut, like many young children, because I always wanted to go to space. And as I've aged, nothing terrifies me more than going to space. Uh, I'm not a good flyer. Even the slightest turbulence sends me into almost full body panic. All of these trips are great. The one I'm already going to do is Twins Day Festival. So 
So I'm not gonna choose that one. I'm gonna go with the Nat Geo Grease one. Real estate, whew. Greenwich Village Trophy Mansion. Six bed, eight bath, six levels. 24 million 995 thousand dollars built in 1839 so the plumbing is just primo features a wine cellar and tasting lounge where you can trap all of your incredibly elite friends it's really easy to look at these incredibly expensive places and go well, this is the most beautiful place I've ever seen until you're living there alone and you go, wow, this is uh, way too big and it's feeling a tad haunted. Immediately, for off the bat, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, The Circular Sun House by Frank Lloyd Wright. Now this, yes, this is cool. $7,950,000, you get a Frank Lloyd Wright house, which if you're thinking about property as an investment anyhow, is probably an incredible investment. 3,095 square feet. Uh, and the final design from Wright was built in 1967. Three bed, three bath. I always prefer my kind of smaller, more intimate houses. Private Contemporary Sanctuary in Auckland, New Zealand. $8,697,558. Four bed, six bath, three levels, 4,520 square feet, curved floor to ceiling glass, tinted for privacy. I feel like what you're really paying for with this house is the view and the environment. So you're, you're paying for the city, you're paying for New Zealand. I, like many of us, have an incredible soft spot for New Zealand. It is truly just as spectacular uh, as everyone says it is. It's a bit, it's a bit too modern for me. Palazzo Macaulay Martano in Italy. Oh, okay. This is incredible. For $766,000, you get an incredible place in Italy. Three bed, four bath, perfect. Two levels, perfect. 8,611 square feet, perfect. Stone workmanship, incredible. Balcony, incredible. Terrace, incredible. Fireplace, nuts. Ooh, very gaudy inside. Okay, I'm looking at this now, very gaudy inside. All right, all right. This I could do for about a week and then I might go insane. This is the kind of thing that, you know, you hear a news story about and some guy was just painting the walls with, with his own blood after like two months because he just went insane because the marble in the bathroom, he was taking a shit and just went crazy staring into whatever he was seeing in the marble. I'm on the edge already, you know? All it takes is one place like this. But fun for a vacation, really great for a vacation. So, summary, hands down. The one that I would go for is the Phoenix, Arizona Circular Sun House. Okay, let's look at some cameras. You got a Hasselblad. It's gonna be $6,399. The 907X is compatible with the XCD range of mirrorless lenses, as well as HC, HCD, V system, and x pan lenses via optional adapters. I am personally not the biggest Hasselblad guy. Um, this looks like a digital back they're putting, which changes the game. I've tried to shoot on a digital back with a Hasselblad before, and it did not yield the quality of shots that I, that I really loved. When you're going medium format, I would prefer if you're gonna spend the money to just go with film. But film, film is a privilege. Film is very expensive, it's hard to find. The Leica M11 rangefinder, yes. Love this, also digital. $8,995, improves clarity and color accuracy when working in low light conditions. Great, that's cool. The digital Leicas are beautiful. You kind of can't go wrong with them. Of course, like I mentioned, the thing you have to consider when you're buying a Leica body is though this thing is around $9,000, the lenses are out of this world. It's a beautiful camera. It's a solid body. You'll take wonderful photos off it. Let's see. Yeah, okay. This is awesome. 19 bucks, Polaroid eye zone. Love it. Oh, 19 euros. Yes, I see. That's a completely different symbol. I get it. Okay, this camera takes pictures 1.5 by one. It's very small, it's a little strip, it's cool. Film for this camera was discontinued in 2006, so that makes it problematic. I love these kind of cameras though. If I find a Hello Kitty disposable camera in a bargain bin in some sort of um, you know, thrift store, I love those cameras because they, every photo has this really, really unique identity to it. 
which is kind of what you're searching for ultimately. I would love these cameras, and if you could find film for this, I would say this would be a lot of fun. The Game Boy camera, yeah! Okay, $475. I actually had a buddy that used to love taking photos uh, from his, his Game Boy camera. It has a really unique fingerprint, which I love. I would be worried about how you get these images. I'm not familiar with how you pull them to your actual device, but I think this is really cool. Okay, if I were to go with anything in the camera category, I'd go with the Game Boy camera. Okay, I, I spent around $8.4 million, but I could have spent a lot more money. So in the grand scheme of things, I was actually pretty thrifty about it, I'd like to say. And I won't hear the alternative as an answer. Thank you for taking me on the shopping spree. Hope you guys had fun. And remember, if you find a really expensive piece online, you can probably find a cheaper alternative somewhere else online as well.